Okay, because the sound is always better in Zoom than it is from the Facebook. Okay, all right. Well, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to see comments that come up or not on the thing. So if one of you two can just monitor the comment stream, that would yep. be awesome. Um, anybody who is joining us, welcome, welcome. We're just kind of tooling around a little bit here while we get set up and wait for people to come in. Oh, I can see. I can see comments. Okay. Hey, Kayla, I can see that you are that you are here. Everyone is in the event. Yes, we're going to share this into the event so that people can see it. Has it been yep. shared into the actual event? No, I don't think so. All right, we're sharing it into the event so that everybody in the event knows to oh, go someone there. Someone awesome shared it for us on a comment. Someone awesome shared it for us. Woo. Yeah, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna butcher her name. <laughs> Vera, <laughs> Sapphira. <laughs> I have a bad name or a hard name to say, so I always don't want to butcher other people's names. How is the sound for anybody listening? Can you hear us all okay? I know it has to pick up the sound from my computer, so I'm just doing a sound check real quick. Hi, Carla. Hey, Kayla. If one of you could let us know if you can hear us okay, that would be fantastic. Okay, we are rapidly getting people in, so I'm just going to go ahead and start this. Uh, hi, Eliza. Hi, Tracy. Hey, everybody. Okay. We, I'm going to go ahead and kick this off because it is Saturday night. And if you are on the it's East Sunday Coast night. or over, <laughs> is, what? I mean, it's, it's Sunday, Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> We've been working really hard. I don't even know what day of the week it is. Raywin, your sound is a little bit We lower. have been working hard. <laughs> is it better if I talk already. like this? <laughs> no, this is not better. <laughs> No, that's not much better. Okay. Okay. I can unplug it, but then you'll get Delaney in the background. Um, it's all right. We'll just, uh, okay. we'll just is this go. better. We'll just, that is better actually. Okay. You just okay. Will also, you'll see my husband come home at some point from work and you guys can get a real active look at my life. This is what it's like to be a working, oh, an oh, at home working mom. I've got it up as loud as I can possibly go on mine. So, okay. Welcome. We are kicking off the Women in Publishing Summit 2019. Woo! Raywood's pregnant. Nancy's doing Whole30, and I'm just trying to behave myself. So, we're all <laughs> No, you can drink wine for us, right? I, I wish I, I would love to, but I'm afraid what would happen if I started drinking wine while trying to do this after all this time. So we are really <laughs> excited. We do have a little bit of an agenda for this evening. So um, bear with us as we get everything all straightened out. It is Sunday night, despite me trying to say it's Saturday night. Um, and we, let me just tell you, I could not have made it to where we are today without these two ladies here. So thank you, thank you, thank you to my amazing team. And um, our plan tonight is to give a general overview of what's going to happen this week. And then we're going to dig into a little bit of the topic that we really wanted to discuss, which is how discuss, not discussed, is how to use a team to grow your author business. Because um, if you're new to this or just getting into it, I am sure by the end of the week, you're going to realize that you cannot possibly do, do all the things that we have taught you to do by yourself. <laughs> I mean, you can try. There are some people who do it all by themselves. But for those of you who, especially the entrepreneurs who are building businesses and trying to build a book at the same time, you just, you really, really, really need a team to support you. Um, and if you don't, decide to get a team, at least we're going to show you, talk to you about some of the functions that you could or should be doing until you can hire a team. So first of all, let me just pull up the schedule so I can just walk you through. We are so excited about the schedule this year and about all of the participants that we have. It was not my intent when we started out a few months ago to have 84 speakers, but that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> we just had so many amazing submissions of people that just have these stories and this and this knowledge base and these 
we just couldn't say no. So that's why we have a lot of panels this time. Um, but panels are fun because you, you feed off of each other and everybody gives a little bit of a different perspective on the same topic, which is really great so that you can understand that there's no one way to do this, that there are a lot of different ways to do this. And you shouldn't, you know, listen to anybody who, who will tell you this is the only way to write, publish, sell a book. So Tomorrow we kick it off officially at 10 a.m. with our first panel interview, and that panel interview is with um, three authors, I believe, if not, if we didn't end a fourth one, but it's going to be Jerry Hilger, um, Lynn Hawkins, and uh, I mean, sorry, Lynn Fairchild Hawks, and um, Sarah Stamp, right? Yep. Okay. And Claudette. We did add, we did add some extra people into it. And we're just, we're kind of talking about the big picture, um, why they wrote books, why they got into publishing, what they're doing with their books. The theme of this year is changing the world with your words. And, um, some of the content is very, very emotional and very powerful on really raw stories of, of challenges and, and triumphs and, you know, sad things that have happened and loss and love and abuse. And I mean, just, we cover, we cover so much in this summit. And then there's a lot of practical stuff as well. So, um, just like success tips and expertise tips and tools and talking with about legal aspects and I'm getting all ahead of myself here, but there's a lot of stuff happening in this conference. So let me just get back to the schedule and try and stay on track. So we start off with our, our first, our first panel tomorrow, <laughs> where we're going to just talk to some authors about what's going on and what they're doing and why they're doing it. And Jerry is the newest to be, well, actually Sarah's book publishes next month so she's technically the newest one Jerry just published in October and the other two have been published for a while so it'll be an interesting discussion and then we get into a lot of mindset stuff and a lot of um, empowerment and um, and uh, encouragement and just stories behind what's going on talking about with Lee's Cartwright we'll be talking about mastering your inner chatter for publishing success and how much we just get in our own way um, we're gonna be talking about innovation for authors and talking about highly contentious topics and fiction I mean all kinds of stuff it is such a great lineup if you haven't gone to the women in publishing summit um, dot com page if you click on 2019 you can see all the events and it's all listed out there too so day one big picture why to write a book what to do with the book what you can do with the book what you can do with your story how you can help other people all that kind of stuff day two then we move into your path to publishing success so we're going to talk about the different types of publishing why you might choose to go self-publishing or hybrid publishing or traditional publishing we're going to talk about um what it's like to co-author a book and some things you should think about from legal standpoints and from partnership standpoints we're going to talk about more mindset stuff and giving yourself permission um using a ghostwriter if you decide you just don't have time to write your own book what that looks like for you we're also going to talk about some other interesting things like latinas in publishing and different um not only the challenges that latinas may face but um if you're writing a book why you should think about getting it translated into spanish and how you market to the spanish-speaking population we're talking about like um the difference between um uh, money and selling books and if you have um, issues of this mindset money mindset stuff finding your community planning your book um, and then more and more mindset then day three we get into the tools so what do you need what do you need for editing how do you find an editor um, what are some self editing tools what do you need to know about cover design and interior book layout what are some legal tax international rights getting your book out there all this kind of stuff, book distribution, how to get your books into libraries and more. Then day four, we hit marketing hardcore. Marketing, all kinds of fun marketing stuff. PR tips and tools, how you get in front of the media, how you pitch yourself, how you, um, how you use ads to get um, Amazon ads so that more people are seeing your books, how you launch your book, how you do um, some really fun. We've got some two really fun and very different interviews about how to host really cool events when you do your book launch. And then day five, we get into the, the meat of some tools that you can use to help you, whether it's through the writing, the publishing, the marketing of your book, um, 
creating courses to make more money from your book, all these kinds of things. So it is, hey everybody, I see all of you saying hello and I'm so happy to see you. The, um, the links, okay, this is a good question. You have to actually be registered. This is a very important thing. You have to actually be registered for the summit to receive the links to the events with the exception of the few that will be, I think there's seven live panels and interviews that are happening on this Facebook page. So you don't have to be registered to gain access to that. But if you want access to everything else, um, we are asking for you to register for it. Um, so if you haven't get, gotten registered yet, it's just womeninpublishingsummit.com. Um, it's a free registration. And then you will each day, we're going to send out an email link that will have all the links to that day's presentations. Okay. All right. So that covers kind of the logistics of it. And then it will run free online for the full week. We'll wrap it up on Saturday. I mean, on Friday. Good grief. I can't keep my days straight. But on Friday, the cool thing is um, if you missed something or didn't have a chance to watch 700 interviews in the one week, um, there aren't quite that many, but <laughs> it's a lot. Um, we will offer the opportunity that link didn't go through, Nancy, that um, we will offer the opportunity for a voting period. So you can come in and you can say, we're gonna send out a little survey that says, which ones would you have watched if you uh, could have fit them in? And we will replay the top 10 or 15 videos that people wanted to see um, the next week. So, whoo, that was a lot to get through. I'm telling you what, I'm functioning on, on adrenaline right now. Okay. Yeah. Take a breath. <laughs> take a breath. Okay. Awesome. Now we've got a whole bunch of people here and we have your attention. We've gone through kind of some of the logistics. We've gone through, um, uh, you know, I just saw a question here. Will you talk about beta readers? You know, that's funny. Um, we usually talk about beta readers a lot. I don't, I cannot honestly recall if we actually got into using beta readers, but I know that I have a whole bunch of stuff about beta readers on the right publish sell.co website. So, um, Nancy, maybe if you, if one of y'all can find that link and throw it in there, that was, um, I lost the comment now. Yes. Sandra Parker asked about it. So, um, We'll post that in there, but we talk about pretty much everything. We talk about launch teams. We talk about, um, and you know, um, we've got a couple on editing. So we may have gotten into the pro into talking about beta readers and sending it out to beta readers and things like that, and that um, in the editing things. But okay, so we've gone over the logistics now. We'll go back through and check out these questions. Um, I'm going to just quickly roll through here. I'm going, to roll, I'm going to read through some of these and see what we can come back to. And while I'm doing that, I would love for Nancy to tell everybody who she is and Raven to tell everybody who she is. Hi, um, I'm Nancy Cavionez. Um, if you are a speaker or you have sent an email to the support inbox and the sign off has been Nancy, that's me. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I have been working with Alexa since 2016 um, as her virtual assistant, and I'm also a virtual assistant to indie authors. And she's amazing. We would not be here tonight if it weren't for both of these ladies. I can tell you that. Ray win. Ray to the win. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, I'm Ray win. I also am a virtual assistant. I work primarily on Alexa's Instagram all of them. So if you're on Instagram and you're talking to us on Write, Publish, Sell, Purple Butterfly Press, Lose the Cape, that's all usually me. So okay. if I sound like I don't know what's happening, it's probably because I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but I will get you that answer. <laughs> um, I, um, I think I've been working for Alexa since 2016 too. Alexa Maybe was one of my first clients. Maybe even a little bit earlier than that. Um, let me tell you, this girl is amazing at Instagram. I actually messaged her today yes. and I was like, I cannot believe how illiterate I still am at Instagram. Like I was trying <laughs> to figure out how to share something and, and all this stuff. And it's because she just does it all for me. So all the amazing stuff, if you're following us at either Write, Publish, Sell, I think that's, we've got all the women in publishing stuff on Write, Publish, Sell or Lose the Cape or... Um, 
Yeah, those are the two main business ones. Like everything good that's happening there is because this lady is making it happen. So um, if you're looking for Instagram support, she's your girl. They don't, they don't call her a unicorn for nothing. Yeah, she also does website stuff, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Yes, yes. And I, I do a lot of author um, Instagram accounts too. So if you are looking for support on any author stuff, yeah. thanks to Alexa, which I had no idea anything about authoring and author Instagram accounts before she said, hey, can you help me out? Um, but now I'm a, I'm a pro, I feel like. Yes, you are. And we're going to actually roll into this topic in a second, but I want to answer because our whole purpose tonight is also to help people understand like how they can use uh, freelancers to grow their author business and market their books. Um, and we'll talk about some of the things that we've had going on, but I just want to answer a couple of questions. Davina asked if it's going to start at 10 a.m. every day. It's actually only starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow because tomorrow is the kickoff. So we wanted to make sure that everything launched at the same time. Um, the, 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 all the links, everything will go up at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And then every day after tom tomorrow, we will actually be probably setting it up by 7 or 8 a.m. E um, Eastern time in consideration of all of our friends overseas who will be anxiously awaiting. I may even start them a little bit earlier than that because I know we have um, a bunch of people over in New Zealand and Australia. Um, so we may set those up either way. You'll get an email first thing in the First thing in the morning, our time. I'm not sure when it will be your time. Um, maybe really, really early for the people uh, in California. But yeah, it'll be before 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, and somebody keeps sending me angry faces. I don't know. <laughs> but I see them pop up. Maybe it's a slip of the hand. Of course, I've also learned through online marketing that if you're not making somebody mad, you're not doing it right. So... <laughs> Okay. So let's see. There was one other question I wanted. Okay. So Amanda asked about some specific book marketing stuff. Yes. We get very down in the weeds. I don't know that we specifically went into book bubs, but doing the promo, um, blog tours, book bloggers, giveaway techniques, all of that stuff we talk about a lot. So yes, it'll definitely get out there. And then here's the other question that I haven't seen pop up on here yet, but we've gotten over email quite a few times. And the question is, is this only for self-publishing um, authors? And the answer for that is absolutely not. For a couple of reasons. One, we talk about the different routes to publishing. And even if you're trying to, um, if you're already, we have plenty of authors who are traditionally published published um, presenters in this conference. Um, and one of the things that all of us agree across the board, um, no matter how you're publishing, self-publishing, hybrid publishing, or a traditional publishing, the author bears the burden of marketing hands down across the board. So there's, I mean, there's so much great information on marketing and things like that. And also the other thing we find is that a lot of traditionally published authors wind up becoming hybrid authors, which means they are um, doing some elements of their book as a self-published element and some elements as hybrid, I mean, as traditional, or they may do one traditional and then do another one self-published. So it never hurts as a traditional author to, um, to pay attention to some of this stuff. And then um, the other part is that uh, I forgot what the other part was. It's been a long day, y'all. Um, it's just good to be knowledgeable as an author regardless. Oh, and by the end of this, by the end of this summit, you might decide that you don't want to be traditionally published. I mean, it's very, very possible that you will, and, and we don't, I don't take a preference. I, um, Eva did touch on book, book bubs. Thank you very much, Shelly, for sharing that with me. Uh, okay. Somebody says, I just opened the all access pass, but can't get into my account. Okay. If you purchase the all access account, I mean, all access pass and are trying to sign in with LinkedIn, don't do it. We've had issues <laughs> for some reason. with Hold on nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been giving us problems for some reason. So just, um, when you enroll, uh, use a, an email and password. But please email us at support at support at women in publishing summit dot com if you're having any problems with that, and we will get you manually. Um, we'll get you taken care of as quickly as we can. Speaking of the all access pass, um, 
Yes, Joe, uh, somebody, we talk about queries at some point in time. The, the live broadcast will be available to come back and watch throughout the week. So if you can't be here live during the event, no worries, no problems, they will be here. Um, and then the same with the, uh, <laughs> the same with, I'm laughing at some of these comments, the same with the actual content <laughs> published, it'll be available for 48 hours, give or take. I mean, we don't have something that's like at 48 hours, boom, going to take it down. So um, two-ish days, you'll be able to go back and watch all of these videos. But I do want to talk about the All Access Pass for a second. This is, okay, first of all, it's a lot of content to take in in one week. Like, unless you what sat I, there and just watched videos all day long. But more than that, it's a yeah, lot. I, that's what I was saying this morning, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know, unless you make it your full-time job. Right. You are not going to get through all of these videos in a week. It's well, and it's just a lot of information to consume. So for yeah. me, I mean, I've listened to a couple of these videos like three times and I'm still taking notes and I've been doing this for years on years, you know? So <laughs> um, the real value of the all access pass is, but is not just having access to watch the videos. Listen, you get the audio, you get the transcripts, you get all the bonuses, which I've never seen such a crazy list of long bonuses in my life. But the real benefit from the all access pass to me is community because we have the, the Facebook group. It's a private group only to people who purchase the all access pass. And then, um, it, throughout the year, like it's not just going to end for us in the community throughout the year, we'll be doing monthly webinars and training and encouraging people. And we're basically like each other's launch teams and, and promo and marketing like group built in. Like for me, it's about building a community of people to support this amazing journey because women are different in a lot of respects when it comes to the challenges that we experience with marketing ourselves, with promoting a book, with doing all of these things. And not to say that, that men don't also have fears, but there's, I think a lot of different things that happen in the mindset and stuff of women. So the, for me, the, the biggest part of it is the community and, um, there is a bonus period that is ending tonight. If you purchase the 2019 All Access Pass tonight, you also get 2018 for free. And this is lifetime access. So there was so much amazing stuff last year as well. Um, I mean, let me tell you, you can never learn enough about this business because it's constantly evolving and changing and growing. And I've been running these conferences for four years and I have yet to do an interview where I knew everything that everybody told me. In yeah. fact, there's so much to learn. Nancy's learned. In fact, we have another VA that's not on the live with us today. And Sarah told us today, she was like, I didn't even have any interest in writing a book. And after watching these, I want to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> I think the word she used was brainwashed. Wait, you <laughs> brainwashed her. You know, and like the, the thing about the videos that our speakers are so generous with their knowledge mm -hmm. that even if like the main topic of the video is about one thing, but you end up learning so much about other things. Right. Because yeah. they're so willing to like share everything that they've learned. Like they go, I mean, it's amazing. So um, Christy is, well, all of them are this way, but Christy um, Carlson was a great one because we were talking about how to use the media to, um, to help you boost your book launch. And she wound up giving the entire strategy of how to launch a just kick butt um, Kickstarter to fund her project. And she made, she brought in yeah. $50,000 in her Kickstarter. <laughs> so it was like, what? What? Yes. There's a lot of there's a lot of Gilmore Girl fans out there. <laughs> there are there are. I, it's like raise your hand if you're a Gilmore Girl fan. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's get into. If anybody has any specific questions about the All Access Pass, I'm happy to get back into that at the end. But I do, um, I do want to encourage you to check it out after you register. If you're not already registered, it will pop up as an option for you on the thank you page. Um, there is a one-time offer as well on the on the cart. That's in a, it's a ninety dollars off our self-publishing one hundred and one mini bundle. Um, so that's an option if you want to go go that. It's not, you don't have to. You can just do the all access pass. You can just watch it for free. 
Um, but we're going to get into our topic at hand here, which is using a team of freelancers to help you grow your, your, um, your author platform. Because I think hands down, anybody who watches these videos will very, very quickly see, no matter how you publish or what you're doing, um, having an author platform is one of the most, having people to buy your book is one of the most important things you can, you can develop. Um, all right. So is everything okay, ladies? I see chats happening. <laughs> They're saying they can't hear Nancy. At like all? a bunch yeah. of people. All right, Nancy, can oh. you turn your vol volume up just a little bit? Yeah. Okay. I can make this better somehow. I mean, maybe I can lean into my microphone more. There we go. Does that That's make good. a difference? Yeah, I do right, hear a difference there. All um, right. How about everybody else? Can you guys hear us? It may just be that I'm so loud. <laughs> yeah, you've got your fancy <laughs> podcasting microphone, and we're over here using, like, our computer's mic built in. I'm trying to turn it up. Let me turn it up some more. Uh, oh, hold on. Let's see. I'm Say something now. Let's see if that's any louder. I, I feel like it's louder because I can hear the like crink crinkling in the background. Okay. All right. So here's the thing. <laughs> when, when I started writing, like I had no intention of developing like this huge author platform or anything. Right. So I had a very specific reason for writing a book. We'd lost a child and I wanted to um, encourage other grieving mothers but as I got into writing and publishing, obviously we got into doing a lot more stuff. And one of the things I quickly found was that it was incredibly difficult for me to do all the things that needed to happen. So um, one of the, I had heard through, I was taking some business coaching and different things like that and in a bunch of entrepreneurial groups. Cause if you're writing a book, you have become a business person. Don't shy away from it. Claim it. You are selling a product. You are a business owner. Act like a business owner, right? That's kind of my best advice to people. And one of the best things, even if it's, well, I mean, okay, pretty much most of us want to sell our books. So uh, the best way, not the best way, but a way to make sure that we can get everything done is to have people to help us with our business if we don't have time to do all of those things, right? So I started by bringing on a virtual assistant. So you hear us turning, throwing around the term VA. That's a virtual assistant. It is just like if you had a, um, an assistant working for you in, in, in a brick and mortar business, they can do well, it varies from person to person. They have different levels of skill. So I would say the one thing is don't hire a VA assuming that they can do everything under the sun for you. Some of them can, but most of them have specialized areas. Like they're good at blogging. They're good at, and I'm going to stop right now. I'm going to let, um, <clears throat> oh, Linda, just so you know, the broadcast, they go online and they stay online uh, for 48 hours each. So, okay. Nancy, you want to start? Or Raywin, I don't care. You guys can kind of tell us a little bit about what being a VA is like and what your areas of expertise are, how you work with authors and businesses. Um, oh, gosh. Um, okay, well, I mean, I started out as a more general VA. So in the beginning, I Get was doing... Turn it up? Get close to your microphone, yeah. Uh -huh. Wait, is that good? I think so. We'll keep going. <laughs> all right. Uh, are we good? <laughs> Sorry. Um, you all like. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, in the beginning, I mean, I consider myself somebody who could do a lot of different things. And, um, you know, I can, you know, I'm a good writer, so I can write blog posts. Um, I'm good at customer service, so I can answer email. Um, I'm good at, technically so I could do a lot of back-end stuff um, so but then I you know after working with Alexa for what did I say 2016 you know I'm kind of being immersed in like the self-publishing world I really um, you know discovered that I love working with authors and I love um, the very specific things that authors um, need to do to sell their books so um, I help with things like organizing um, blog tours for books, 
writing um, email sequences, um, sending out advanced, re advanced reader copies, um, finding um, opportunities for authors to promote themselves on um, podcasts, sending out pitches, um, writing newsletters. Um, sometimes I pinch it as like a proofreader. Um, I've been a beta reader. I mean, I do all of these things that um, are not necessarily a VA job, but I do them because I enjoy them and because I understand the industry. I understand the self-publishing world. Um, so, um, I mean, authors, you know, they want to focus on having time to write. Mm -hmm. They really need to be willing to um, turn the reins over to somebody else. And so what I really try to do is I try to build um, a true relationship and a sense of trust yeah. that you're, that I'm invested in your success as an author. So I'm always going to do what I think is best for you to get your book out there. And, you know, the interesting thing is that um, there are a lot of really good VAs out there. You can find a virtual assistant who can do a lot of good things for you. But if you're using them to help you grow your author platform or help you sell books or help you do a book launch, it is really important, I think, to ask them if they have any experience promoting a, a book in particular or an author um, because there are a lot of different tools and places and ways that you um, that you're going to want to show up as an author that may be just a little bit different uh, than than you would if you were just a, a standard entrepreneur, if I, if I may say. Especially for like fiction authors, like if you've got a, a virtual assistant who's work, used to working with straight um, entrepreneurs. A lot of VAs, it's like launching any kind of product to a degree, but when you're looking at the fiction books where you're really, really heavily integrated with reviews and with awards programs and with um, yeah. you know, all those types of things, like it's really good to have somebody who has experience with working with authors. So, um, you know, obviously um, and even you know, like can't help everybody, but I would ask the question <laughs> if they've ever worked with the author. <laughs> but I'm even if you oh you just got muted honey i don't know your sound just went completely away nancy can you hear me this is the this is the trial and tribulations with um with <laughs> technology <laughs> did you, i'm gonna let ray win hop in for a second and then come back to that one in a minute okay hold hold that thought and we'll see and we'll see if you're, I don't know what happened. You're not muted. Okay, Raywin, let's talk about Instagram for a minute. Um, I heard, I heard a lot of people say in our um, different marketing things, like how Instagram is just where it's at right now for authors. Uh-oh, she went completely away. Um, and I can say that it's so true. Like for a while, like Twitter was the place for all authors to be, but I really feel like now Instagram, especially for fiction and children's books, but not all, I mean, not only like entrepreneurs are killing it on Instagram right now. So let's talk about some Instagram strategies. Oh my goodness. Seriously. I have seen so many people pop up with uh, book review Instagram accounts that yeah like book loop chats like yeah it used to totally be all about twitter which was why i never really got into doing anything for authors because i wasn't on twitter i was on instagram and now it's just like so easy to get other people like if you're doing kids books moms who want to show off their kids reading their books or if you have an entrepreneur book or a fiction book People love to share what they're reading. The book hashtags are crazy. There are so many of them. Mm -hmm. I just, um, I was just looking at my hashtag base the other day, yesterday actually. And there's, I literally have like over 300 hashtags specifically for books, for yeah. authors, for writing. And it's crazy. Like I never would have imagined that there would be such a niche, but people love to read. That's something that's always right. And they like to show off what they're reading and they like to review it. And I would say 
that testimonials on Instagram are way easier to share than testimonials anywhere else. Any, yeah. any other book reviews, I'd say Instagram is the easiest to share. Right. I, I would agree. And I mean, there's something, I mean, we started really going Instagram hard with, uh, with the children's books because I mean, obviously you, you children's books have such beautiful, beautiful, um, which my dude adds covers and, and, and things like that. But it's not just, it's no longer just the children's books. We're seeing everything. Um, so let's talk about some of the cool things that we have used. And Nancy, do you, I think I, I can hear you now. Did you want to jump back in with that? Um, oh. Well, I was just saying that, um, you know, even when it comes to things like sh troubleshooting, the things that could go wrong when they're self-publishing, like you can't figure out why your Amazon author page is doing this, or you don't know how to fix a misspelling on KDP. Right. With your book, like you really want to have a BA that knows what KDP is, that knows how to use like, you know, Amazon Author Central, that, um, you know, knows the rules about using affiliate links, that, you know, all of these things, um, or, or just the various distribution channels that you might be using for your book, like Ingram Spark or something. So, um, you know, you want a BA that has heard of those things, has experience with those things. Yeah. Um, so that's what I was saying before. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have a couple of people. I was trying, the reason I look crazy is because I was trying to pull up some of the places. We have a couple of um, people asking where to find a VA. And um, we actually have a whole list of people that do VA services. But I'm going to, um, I'm going to post a link to our form. So why don't you two talk for a second while I'm looking for the form where people can come in and request stuff and then we can share it in our group. Um, well, I could see, I could run through some of the stuff that's coming up. Somebody just asked about Pinterest um, when we were talking about Instagram. So I, I have to say that Pinterest is like not my real house. So I don't not, know. Not mine either. <laughs> yeah, and we, yeah, we haven't done a lot. Um, we have not done a lot with um, with Pinterest so far, and we were starting to go out with there. But I will say, I have been sh um, seeing a whole lot of stuff on on Pinterest, and it, it is still a great place. There are lots of VAs who who have an expertise in yeah. um, in Pinterest. So yes, it's a great place for books. I mean, a lot of people will start lists of books that they love and what they're reading. Um, let's see. Okay, Kim, here's the answer. Well, we can we can at least get you started with um, sharing your information if you want to put it in there on where to find a VA. Kim Maddox asked that. I don't know how I got out of this thingy. Okay, sorry. I obviously cannot type, search, and talk at the same time. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, LinkedIn is a good place to find a VA. LinkedIn is a good place. There's tons of groups on Facebook, too, that will allow both VAs and business owners in so you can go mm -hmm. search for a VA. But I would yeah. say I've gotten most of my clients through Facebook groups mm -hmm. and then referrals from those. So also ask your friends. Seriously, ask your friends because if someone if you know someone else who has a virtual assistant, they're if they like them, they're gonna tell you that they like them. And yeah, that's actually how should I tell them because that might help I actually created for you guys um, worksheets to answer to help you find like your ideal yes. virtual assistant yeah post that yeah I it, that you were doing that, that. In the, I, uh, yeah. Nancy put it somewhere I, oh. I yeah I, it will be posted on Maylin's um, speaker bio it's already in all access path okay. but have access to it so I need to um, add it to Raymond bio on the um, women in publishing uh, yeah that would be great um, and you know it, it's a it's it's kind of funny because it's a well okay so we have another Facebook group it's called write publish sell and it's a free group if you're not part of the um, if you're not part of the women in publishing um, community 
uh, the right published cell group actually we have a lot of people who offer different kind of services in there and um, we have a files section where everybody can list out the businesses and the services that they do for people in there so you can also go to that group and um, name here so you can just get there but there's lots of ways to find it but again my biggest my biggest piece of advice to you is that no matter what you do um, oops I put a, a colon instead of a semicolon or vice versa uh, no matter what you do you want to um, make sure that they have some type of experience in working with authors um, just so that and if they don't, you can train people up. I'm not going to say that don't turn down a good virtual assistant because they don't know anything about working with authors. That, that's when you send them to the right published cell group and you say, go learn how to market an author. So there's other, <laughs> there's other ways to, to do that too. Um, okay. I want to talk about some of the things that I have found that it's, have been the most, most useful from my perspective as, um, as a publisher and author. Um, and that is just having somebody who can, having a team that can just take off a lot of the need to, like the, just the admin stuff, right? But also having Raywin who understands um, Instagram backwards and forwards so I don't have to take the time to learn it is so useful. And then having Nancy who is there with me in my email inbox and she knows the business well and can answer questions, she can help me, um, <clears throat> For example, one of the biggest things that we talk about is growing your author platform. Let me tell you how much time it takes to go research all the blogs that you could be guest posting on, to go research all the bloggers who might want to do a blog tour for you, that all the find all the Instagrammers who are talking about books and blogging about or um, Instagramming about them, to go find all the podcasts that might potentially be a match for you. Like, it is time consuming and just to be able to have somebody to go do that level of research for you and then take it to the next level where they can they can pitch for you and and respond back and forth to those emails because then a lot of times you have to go in and you have to find the time so if you have them in a shared calendar with you they can actually set up the the appointments for you i mean there's just it is really 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 then you can focus the time on writing the content, on, yeah. on doing the other things that you need to be doing, on going to your day job if you're not doing this full time, yeah. you know? There are so many moving parts to setting up your marketing plan. I mean, if you go to somebody like Alexa to get your marketing strategy, you know, Alexa, you know, talk to you. She's like, okay, here, this is what you need to do but you have to actually go and do it. And right. there's a lot of moving parts because you know you can't just send an email or right. fill out a form or set up a form. You have to make sure your form is connected to your email. You have to make sure everything is automated. You know, certain things have to be in place before you could do the next thing. And it can get overwhelming and it's helpful to have somebody that can do that really fast and understand how it works and how things need to be connected on the back end in order for you to start building your list or whatever your goal is. That's so true. So this is what happens to us on a regular basis. So for those of you who are totally new to me, I realized I didn't never really introduce myself at all. I just always assume that people- But that everybody know knows who you are. Know who I am. <laughs> No introduction. <laughs> so I'm the host of the summit, but I also like I run a um, a self publishing assist company. It's like an author coaching and self publishing assist company, but I also have a, a hybrid publishing company. So we publish we publish our own authors through Cat Biggie Press and then children's book authors through Purple Butterfly Press. So this is the scenario that always happens to us, regardless of whether we're working through a self-publishing assist or we're working through um, one of our one of our authors through the publishing house. They come to us and we're like, okay, this is a fabulous book. We love it. Um, have you set up a, a business page on Facebook yet? Nope. Do you have a landing page set up? What's that? Do you have a blog? I don't know how to set up a blog. 
Do you have an Instagram account? Oh my God, what's Instagram? Or and we're not at that point anymore, but you know, but like, what do I do on Instagram? Or then, you know, they're like, yeah, I have a, I have an Instagram account, but I've posted on it like three times and it's pictures of my pedicures that I got. <laughs> I'm, I'm being over exaggerating here, but the, the point is like, when you start, um, when you start like promoting yourself as an author for somebody, first of all, you know, you never want to be to the point that you're just like, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. But people love, 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 love. Think about like when I get into a book or a book series that I love, like I want to consume everything about it. Um, and it's been a while, it's been a while since I followed authors that closely because we've been so busy with our own books, but a lot of people really, really, really do want to get into the, like knowing who their author is, but it has to be relevant. Like, um, especially as you're getting close to your launch, if, if your book is about cooking, then you shouldn't be spending a whole lot of time showing pictures of your dogs. For example, a dog picture every once in a while is great because it's a great way to connect with people. Yeah. So, but it's all about the strategy, the strategy behind like the behind the scenes looks. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that? Sure. So, um, yeah, because there, there are a few questions people are asking about Instagram strategy. I would say the number one thing to do with that and with your Facebooks as well is to make it so that it's not all about your book, but it's not all about you. You have to find that middle ground. And so, like Alexa said, if your book is about, say, something like mindset, then you're going to want to be making sure that your posts are all about like not, maybe journal entry types or epiphanies and quotes and things that center around the mindset. But it, you can't have it be all your book the entire time. You can't have it be all quotes the entire time. And people want to see you. And so it's like this giant mixture of all of the things. But if you feel like you're sharing too much of your own personal life, that is where I find Instagram stories, Facebook stories, like that is the place to go. So if you want to post about your dog every single day, cause your dog is so cute, make a highlight that says like, I love my dog. And then you can just share your stories and then put that on there. And people will love that because people yeah. have dogs too. And they yeah. connect. They're like, yeah. Hey, I love that. My author loves their dog, you know? So yeah. there, there's a strategy to all of it. You don't have to shy away from it completely but put it in the right place and then use the right accompanying hashtags. Yeah, I would that's say like basics of strategy. Right. And I, that's such a, it's funny. It's a great point. And last year, so Mel Storm is going to be live with us. Her interview will be live on Thursday and she's talking about launching a successful series. And it's funny that we chose to talk about Instagram and dogs, because if you were around last year for the conference and saw her interview, she was talking a lot about how she pays very close attention. She's a fiction writer. She plays very close pays very close attention to what her readers love. And her readers loved dogs. Like every time she did post on Instagram a picture of her dogs, everybody went nuts. So you know what she did? She started a, a series about a bobsled team and with dogs. And it, she said, and it became the most quickly selling, like people, like I shot to the top of everything. So, you know, and this is another thing, like really understanding who your target audience is so that when you are showing up on social media, you're showing up in the right places and you can pivot or grow from what you're finding out people are, you know, responding to. A lot of times we're writing stories that nobody wants to read but ourselves. <laughs> so you gotta find out what people really wanna read. A lot. Yeah, and a lot, and a, quite a few of our speakers talk about how to find your idea, how to find your audience, how to find the people that are going to buy your book. Um, I was just watching Loud Pen's um, interview last night, and even though her um, interview is about planning events, she did say that you know you really need to do your research and figure out who your reader is. Yeah, and for things like planning events like what kind of events are going to get your readers to come out and meet you you know as she talked about things like 
you know, um, if they follow you on Instagram, look at their profile, see what they're interested in, what kinds of things are they commenting on, what are they, you know, what are they liking, what are they sharing, things like that. You really have to know your audience. There's a weird sound happening right now in the background. I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, well, and you know what I like about Penny's um, interview is that she is, uh, she's so like different from the majority of our our, our um, speakers. She's really young and trendy, and like she runs a um, a, 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 a what's it called a PR agency and like all they, they event plan and she's talking about things like, you know, rappers and music that you're going to have and all kinds of stuff. So it's re it was really fun for me because what I love about her is that she was like, this is the way you need to do it. Yeah. Okay. Like make sure you get a permit if you're going to be serving alcohol. <laughs> You have food, okay? Because cool you your event if there's no food, right? Like, right. You have to have you have to feed people. You know that's why I like loved. It's like very nitty gritty practical stuff that will make or break your event. You know, and yeah. it's like you better listen to her because she knows what she's talking about. Yeah, when I say we are all over the, like, we cover a lot of ground in this five days of information just on how you can, how you can promote yourself, how you can market yourself. I was just re-listening to Christy Dash's um, interview because she's got a, her course is launching this week um, from Shadows into the Spotlight. And I was just like, absolutely just mind boggled with the amount of information that people are sharing on how to get yourself pitched the right way and how to get people to write about you, how to write for sites, big, big um, sites. I mean, how to throw these events, what you need to do. I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm so happy with the way that this turned out. And I will say a day one tomorrow when we kick off, um, there are some that we put a trigger warning on our um, embracing your story. Just so you know, we talk about some really, really deep topics. That is a group of women that like blew my mind doing the interview. I mean, we were all at one point in time, every single one of us was crying and um, it was just, it was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But really the theme weaved throughout the entire conference is the power of your words and changing the world with your words and empowering ourselves with our words. I mean, this is such a wonderful time for women, um, for women you see here, three women who have launched our own businesses so that we could stay home and raise our children. To me, that's like one of the most powerful things that the digital world has given to us, but sharing our stories and, and um, you know, the, the, the just, I'm just, is such a great group of women and such great stories and such great reasons for why they're writing their books and why they're doing the things that they're doing. Plus just like phenomenal information on how you can do it too. And, um, and, and I mean, you don't cry at least once in this summit, you're heartless. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I am totally kidding. <laughs> uh, oh, but I can't, I can't think at, thank you two enough for all the work that you have done, not just in this summit, but in, you know, all of my, in the, since you've been involved in my business and the growth of my business for the last couple of years, I really want to say that I know it can be scary because it was a big, it was big for me to decide, okay, I'm going to actually pay other people. And I wasn't at a point where it was bringing in a lot of money um, when I decided to expand my team, but I knew there was no way I could do all of these things by myself. And what was happening was I was in the DIY mode for a while and I was buying courses on how to do Pinterest by myself, how to do Instagram by myself and how to do this and that. So I was spending a couple hundred dollars here, a couple hundred dollars there, and then never having the time to implement. Um, so it just really made a big difference to me. Raywin, by the way, has grown all of my Instagram accounts over a thousand followers in not a whole lot of time. I don't know. It's less than a, um, 
less than a year at least. I don't know. Um, Lose the Cape has been a longer journey, but we're not going to get into that because we've been all over the place with Lose the Cape, <laughs> several, several rebrands and changes. But and that's, you know, the thing is you can rebrand and you can change, but it slows you down for sure. So focus is another really big thing. Hey, Miss Delaney, we have a, we have a friend. So, all right. Well, we're going to wrap this up because it is almost 10 o'clock. Is there any, first of all, both of you need to make sure people know where they can find you. And um, if you have any final thoughts on, um, on anything, go for it. <laughs> You're both muted now. <laughs> Oh, like speak. Um, <laughs> you guys can. My website's just my first and last name, RaywinSangari.com, which I will put down there because I'm like the number one only person in the world with my name. Um, and on Instagram, I'm Ray to the Win, which is just a play on my first name. You can find me at Caviona.com, um, and my favorite place to hang out is on LinkedIn. So you could just do a search on LinkedIn for Nancy Caviona because I am also the only person in the world with my name because my husband's grandmother made up our last name. So there you go. <laughs> so wait a minute. I have to ask you, when, when did, this is so funny, when did Instagram, be, I mean, LinkedIn become your favorite place to hang out? This is new. <laughs> oh, um, you know, when I realized that, you know, um, uh, for me, finding people who finding people with my services, they were not on Facebook. Yeah. You know, and LinkedIn is like great for business to business relationships. There's a lot of authors yeah. on LinkedIn. Yeah. There's a lot of entrepreneurs on LinkedIn. Um, so, and I'm just finding that LinkedIn is just like working better for me as far as finding the people that I ideally would like to work with. So, yeah, we're definitely going to have somebody on the next summit talk about LinkedIn and the connections that you can, you can make through it and how to use it to grow your business and all of that stuff. Cause we are definitely seeing that, especially with this summit, we found that several of our, um, our contestants <laughs> our speakers, <laughs> our speakers were, um, actively using LinkedIn and, um, it, it, it incurred, it inspired me to go over there and clean up my profile a little bit. I hadn't even put some of the stuff that I've done and it still it still had me as a blogger I know holding back which was where I started like eight years ago <laughs> so, well, I went in yeah, I don't LinkedIn I, I, saw, I was like I did not put the women oh, me. in here Nancy must have done that see this is the other token of a good VA I was like either I'm losing my mind or someone else is updating my <laughs> Nancy, you want to update mine? I think mine still says I'm a journalist. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny because that's been a while there. All right. Okay, so just to recap um, quickly, tonight, if you haven't registered yet, please go over to the womeninpublishingsummit.com page and get registered for your free registration. Once you are registered, it will send you to a thank you page that says, would you like to upgrade to the community all access pass? You can do that for $47. It gets you all the recordings of everything, um, both video and audio, all the transcriptions, plus oodles and oodles of um, bonuses, plus lifetime access. But the most important part is the community access. So within the community, we are um, going to be doing monthly trainings and webinars, encouragement, support, um, you know, just building that community of women who are writing and publishing books and supporting each other through the process. If you already registered and you didn't up, um, upgrade, go check your email because we sent out an email tonight and it definitely covers it. Now, if you upgrade before tomorrow, you also get the 2018 all access pass for free. So there was so much great information in there as well. And really, I should be charging a lot more than $47, but I like to keep it manageable because I remember what it was like when I started out and literally didn't have the money to take my kids to Chick-fil-A. Uh, that was our big day out. So we try to keep it reasonable. Um, I'm really excited to have all of you join us on this journey. This is us. This is who we are, but we are very encouraging and supportive and just want to see people be successful. We are very much of all ships rise together, collaboration, um, all, all of these types of things. I mean, there's 
So there will never be enough books in this world. There will never be enough powerful stories out there that are changing other people's lives and helping people. There will never be a shortage of readers. And the more we can lean on each other and help each other through the process, the better it's going to be. So, um, but otherwise, if you don't want to invest, that's cool. You can, you can watch as much as you can get in for free over the next five days. An email will go out tomorrow morning at about eight o'clock that'll show you where to access all of the free content. You'll get an email every single day with the links to that day's new content. They will be available for free for 48 hours-ish. We're not, we won't take them down before 48 hours. You might get them a little bit longer than 48 hours. And next week we will replay the most popular 10 to 15 videos. I would be completely remiss if I did not thank our sponsors. Our, um, our uh, platinum sponsor is Thinkific. Their presentation will be up by the end of tonight. So if you're just like over like anxious that you won't be able to access anything until 11 a.m. tomorrow, you'll be able to go get Miranda's tonight awesome, awesome presentation about how you so can good. build courses um, to grow your author platform, to grow your email list, to make some money, to build a course from your book, all this kind of stuff. And they have a fantastic bonus offer for everybody, which is 30 days free. You don't have to put in a credit card or anything, just an email address. They will give you 30 days free to their, um, to their business level platform and about $900 worth of training to show you how to utilize it. Um, so that's really amazing. And then our, our, um, gold level sponsor is Vervante. They were our platinum last year. Vervante is an amazing company that help you do all kinds of stuff. So check out their stuff. Um, platinum, uh, they do publishing and they do products to, to go along with your book. So if you want to have fancy note cards or, or, um, uh, book markers or, or journals or anything like that to sell as an upsell to your book. Um, fantastic company to do that kind of stuff. And um, Cindy is just an amazing woman, the CEO of Vervante. And then we have Pro Writing Aid as our, our silver level sponsor, and they are a self-editing tool. They are also giving away some great stuff to our All Access Pass holders, and um, you'll hear them on Wednesday, I believe. And let's see, that's, that's our big sponsors. You can go over to womeninpublishingsummit.com forward slash sponsors to see the rest of our sponsors. And there's like a uh, book excellence award is offering a free, if you've already published, you can enter to get a free um, submission into their annual awards competition. I won a book award through them last year and it really, really, really did bump up book sales. For, for, so don't, um, you know, do consider book awards as part of your marketing platform. So it's going to be a great week. We have so much content for you and we can't wait to see you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks yeah. ladies. I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. Thank you. See you guys Bye. later. Bye. 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 Bye.